Hi everyone! So I am about to go out to a spring ball. Even though the weather in New York sucks, uh, it's about 60 degrees and it's been raining all day. Um, it's not spring-like at all, so um, my date and I are going as the darkness of spring. <laughs> Being that we don't really own any pastels anyway, so it works out. And he's... Uh, Evan, do you want to be in this? You want to say hello to my YouTube audience? It's a small audience. He's uh, he's wearing makeup. Hello, YouTube. <laughs> hello, YouTube. So he has a crown of, of leaves and horns, and I'm about to put on some horns. I have this feathery, isn't this awesome? I have this uh, feather, like, bustle thing, and, um, and these cool lace uh, wedding gloves, and some feather wings, and, um, and here are my horns. The lighting in here is horrible. Should I put fashion things? Nah. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so I am, uh, a, a dark, what am I? You're a dark uh, fae. Just dark fae? Dark. Uh, I think there's... You're a dark fae. I'm, I'm Stacy. That's who I am. Oops, real name. I gave away my real name. Yeah, and I got these feather wings I'm going to put on. So, um, yeah, so this is all in uh, our neighborhood, basically, the south end of Park Slope at the Grand Prospect Hall. Um, beer garden. Al Capone. Where, yes, yes, Al Capone used to have meetings there. Um, and there's steel in the stall to protect Yeah. Exciting place. We sat in his booth. Um, bad lighting everywhere. Bad lighting everywhere. Down the hall. Maybe it's better in here. Well, my corset is green, like an, like an emerald green, with appliques, you see, uh, New Orleans style. Actually, I got this from um, a corset maker in New Orleans, whose name I'm forgetting at the moment. Uh, that's bad of me to always forget names when I'm <laughs> recording names of things, names of people. Um, Yes, and this is the only corset I ever wear because it's not my size, it's too big, which means I can breathe comfortably, I can dance in it. Um, this was the smallest size she made, so it wasn't by design that I wound up with something that I could actually dance in. But it's good because I have a couple others that I spend lots of money on and they get no use whatsoever. Um, all right, so uh, whatever you're doing, this weekend. I hope you have a fabulous time, and I'll be back later. Bye! Hello! So it's the next day, and um, I... I... <laughs> uh, haven't slept much this weekend. Um, not just because of last night, but because of the previous night when... Um, this was Friday. I had an anxiety attack in the middle of the night. Um, I believe I mentioned in my, yes, I did mention in my last video that there was a CEO transition at work. So I have a new boss and um, it totally changed my, um, well, somewhat changed my job responsibilities, not totally. So, um, basically, the, I have the same responsibilities and then more. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, um, I woke up Friday night, um, well, I wake up every couple of hours anyway, sometimes every hour, um, but I woke up at 2.45 and I was awake until nearly 5, and of course this is the night before I have told everyone I know that I'm going to the spring ball, so I couldn't get out of that, and it, I mean, it was good that I went, um, because I, I did want to see some people who were driving from all over the place, you know, they have an event in... This was in Brooklyn, but typically in Manhattan, and people come from New Jersey and up in the Bronx, and it takes them two hours to get here, and you don't want to say, oh, I can't come, I don't feel well. Um, and we did have a really good time. Um, and, uh, and I was fortunate that <laughs> a person I don't like very much um, had to cancel. <laughs> so, 
so that was nice. It was like um, getting out of getting out of a class you don't like because I wasn't sure how I, how I would socially navigate that scene um, of uh, you know maintaining um, uh, polite appearances uh, among all of our friends. So okay, <laughs> so uh, I'm not gonna go into details. Um, I just don't like dishonest people and you know when or thieves. Um, or people who abuse me. Um, all right, so yes, so what I'm learning um, as I get older, um, I am not coping with uh, the day after partying, even if it's just mild partying, as in got to bed before 12.30 and um, only had two drinks but my brain is just, it, I, I have such limited cognitive ability right now. Um, first of all, I didn't get enough sleep again last night because even though I went to bed at a fairly decent hour for a Saturday night, I um, woke up at 6.30. Like it, was a, like it was a work day, actually worse than a work day because on a work day, I'm typically like, fighting to get out of bed at seven when my alarm goes off. Actually, my alarm goes off at 20 till, but sometimes I'll push it forward and just decide to be late. Um, anyway, so yes, so I'm not doing too well, and that's why I'm making a video, because I can't, I'm not gonna be able to write anything or, um, you know, uh, go on a hike um, out in the park or anything. I just don't have the energy. Um, so I'll just sit here with you guys and also my face broke out. You can't tell, but this is also an effect of stress, I believe, because I don't get real breakouts. Um, I, I use proactive and, and uh, rosehip seed oil, which tends to take care of that, and Retin-A, and for this to happen, to have like five blemishes at once is unheard of, though you're hearing of it now. Um, you can't see it because the light in here is too bright, but um, anyway, it's, it's some facial activity. Uh, all right, so what's um, Len, Len, what's some good news I can give you? Um, um, yeah, BPAL. So uh, last week, this sometimes happens when I'm really stressed out. I'll just buy more BPAL. Or um, in this case, I did a swap with someone. It was a very good swap um, because this lady really knows how to um, spoil her gift recipients. Um, I traded my only lovers left alive, um, Cafe Mila in Newitz. I don't know how to say it. It's the, the coffee shop, um, in the movie. Uh, it's supposed to smell like coffee and a bunch of spices and I, I did, I detected no coffee. It was a bunch of spices, and I thought initially, oh, this is good. It's like a strong clove and sort of an Indian um, flavor. But then I realized that it smelled just like the taste of um, my Tulsi holy basil tea. And I just, I don't know. Um, it, was, it was like identical to that, and I, um, I don't want to smell like that. Uh... I just don't. <laughs> Apparently other people do. <laughs> they perhaps don't drink this tea. Um, so yeah, so I swapped that for um, Crimson from the Crimson Peak line, which is still available on the BPAL website. Do you see it? Yes, that's the label. Um, and this smells almost identical to uh, Streets of Detroit. I mean, it's even straight from the bottle. There's a there's a very slight difference because it's like you can you can separate the sweetness from the motor oil in um, Streets of Detroit, and this doesn't have a pronounced motor oil scent at all. But when you put it on your skin, especially um, after waiting half an hour, at least on me, it smells exactly the same, and it has the same um, long wearing. Uh, strong, uh, uh, um, uh, oh god, my brain. It has a, a very good throw. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I wasn't expecting that. I thought it would be 
Um, I don't know what I expected it to be. I just heard great things about it, and it is good. It's just I don't really need two bottles that smell the same of that. There are certain bottles that I do need two of, but that's not one of them. Um, anyway, so still, um, so this person I swapped with also sent me a ton of imps, and they're good imps. You know, uh, frequently I just get a bunch of crap. <laughs> there might be one out of five, and um, these are all really good. I got... Um, Red Devil, which is lovely. Baneberry, which is like a... I like Baneberry a lot. It's it's some kind of berry, but without... It's not too sweet. It's almost like a... Lilac candy... No, 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 no. Oh, citrus... Oh, it's so strange. I, I can't, there's, there's like a, a mild citrus note and lilacs and candy. That's what I smell. I'm not, I'm not looking up the notes for you. I don't want this to be too formal. Um, I, <laughs> I think it's more helpful to give impressions anyway. And Pele, which is pretty good. Um, Saturnalia, which I thought would be great for a man. Or a woman. Not sweet at all. Really unique. Uh, um, I'll have to think about what I smell in that one, though. Almost a wood. I don't know. Um, and a few others that I won't go into. And she sent me a ton of tea. I had said, I, yeah, I like tea, not black tea or green tea. They give me insomnia, or worse than my insomnia. But fruit and herbal teas. And she sent me all this fruit and herbal tea. It was like a, it was a huge thing of it, all, to, all different types. Just glorious. And then she sent me, um, rarely do you get a free bottle of something <laughs> in a package when you buy or swap. But she gave me, um, this has a, at least one decant in it left. Um, Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Can you see the label? That's like a dragon or a, is it a griffin? Or a lion? <laughs> it's like a lion dragon. I don't know. It could be a griffin. Um, and it has, I think, I think I smell black musk and like a pepper kind of smell. Um, so that's neat. Um, also, this arrived yesterday as well. Everything came as I was getting ready for the ball last night. Um, so I was so fortunate to find someone selling a half bottle of my, one of my favorites, Mead Moon. I was just talking about this last week on video. Um, ah, okay, computer logged up. Um, so I had a bottle, um, it was about half when I got it, of Mead Moon. Um, and this is what my label looked like, okay? It, see this? See, it's sort of a, a light brown color. So when my, um, new, it's not new. Um, so when I received this next bottle, which is more than half full, they said, I think they said 60%, but I mean, it might as well be, it's close to the top of the label. The label is black. Do you know what this tells me? Oh, and it smells better. <laughs> so this tells me that whoever sold me this one for actually more money than this, new, the one I just got, um, probably stored it in the sun. And it, it, so, so what I had fallen in love with was kind of a, um, a, it was a paler, more faded, lighter smelling honey. And this newer bottle for me, newer for me, You can um, pick out all the spices that they list, like nutmeg. I think there's clove, and um, it's just very. It, it's like, uh, well, it's like a picture that hasn't been faded by the sun. That's what it's like. Um, it's beautiful, and even um, 
olfactorily um, handicapped Evan, who can't really smell anything, um, loved this one. He said, oh, it's like you could just, you know, it could be the dead of winter. You inhale that and then you're at the Ren Fair. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about this. Woo! And uh, not a whole lot of extras with that package, but that's fine. I don't care. Um, it's just, it's so good. Um, and the other thing that I got, I think this was also, yeah, this is also yesterday. It was a good day for mail. Um, bought myself lots of presents. So uh, someone in the, um, on the Facebook uh, page for the uh, BPAL Sales Madness, she's also active on the um, BPAL Parlor on Facebook. She does decanting. I'm not naming names. Maybe people would want me to name names because it's, you know, good advertising, but um, I'm not going to do that without asking. Um, so I, so she had talked a lot about Cellar Door uh, Bath Supply Company, and I checked out their page, and there are all these um, fancy soaps and other things, but I was interested in the soaps, and again, the, ah, uh, this damned lighting, damned lighting in here. Oh, there, that works, doesn't it? So this is uh, apricot plus agave nectar. And Evan liked this one too. It's like um, apricot candy or a really nice cocktail um, that has, uh, I don't know, do they make apricot syrup? <laughs> Probably not. Um, but that's very good for spring. Then I had ordered, um, because these were half off, because they're out of season, uh, Drunken Pumpkin. Oh, that label shows it better. Drunken Pumpkin and over here, uh, Chestnuts Roasting. So I got these, these are both three fifty, dollars and the regular price full bars are 7 So Drunken Pumpkin smells pretty good. Might be a little bit too much clove for some people. It's very clove heavy. Um, uh, also could be good for a man, really spicy. And the chestnuts roasting, um, I'm not too impressed with. This does not smell like chestnuts roasting to me. Uh, it's supposed to have warm caramel, dark brown sugar, and the chestnuts. And I don't know, it's, it's just sort of a um, nondescript vaguely holiday scent. <laughs> so I'd skip that one. Um, but this one is possibly my favorite. This is a sample. They have samples of anything you want for a dollar. And it, it and it's thin like this, like a piece of chocolate. Um, they say it, you know, it's good for maybe four or five uses. Um, I can probably make it last a lot longer than that, the way I do things. Once they break up, I still use like the side to scrub my hands and stuff. So, um, this is tobacco and oak moss, and that's what it smells like. Oh, it's, it's, it's lovely and, um, definitely good for a man. I, I like masculine smells, so, um, so that's what I tend to end up with, at least in soap. I don't know why soap. I, do, I just don't like the, the girly stuff. Um, I also ordered, no, I didn't order these. Oh, so also very cool. They threw in, uh, three... Um, free sample sizes. So um, they gave me ginger fizz, which smells like a like ginger ale. Really, it smells like ginger ale. That's nice. And um, this is lavender, but it's not. It smells like it's been sitting next to a bunch of other soaps. And I, I wouldn't call this. I, I wouldn't blindly identify this as lavender. I don't know what I'd identify it as. <laughs> Something that I wouldn't buy, probably. And then, um, Aradian? No, Acadian Driftwood. They, they wrote these, like, with a knife, so it's hard to read. Acadian Driftwood is great. Um, I've never smelled soap like this. Very much like Driftwood. Um, so, yeah, so, uh, I, I would recommend the Acadian Driftwood, the Tobacco Oak Moss, and, um, the, if you like sweeter stuff, the, uh, apricot, apricot agave nectar, 
Um, yes. So what else do I have to talk about? Um, I know that I uh, had planned to say many more things. Um, but, oh, oh, it escapes me. It escapes me. Um, I might have to cut back on my going out, which is a drag, but I just can't. My life's purpose is to write good poetry. And, and this is, this is um, a severe handicap when I can't do it. Sunday is the best day for me because I've, I've had um, a buffer from work. You know, you get in the, the, the groove of um, being a taskmaster and taking care of details and then you and you forget how to think abstractly but you have the saturday buffer in between work and your writing day which is sunday um and you can't do it because you had some alcohol and an hour less of sleep than is ideal or two hours less i really only need seven but most people need more um all right so um yeah um you know what I'm noticing? I have a very pronounced Adam's apple. I don't have, I mean, some people think I might have like hyperthyroidism or something, but I've had my thyroid checked like every single time I go in for physical and it's right, you know, my thyroxin is right, or T4, whatever they test for, is um, right in the middle of the zone. So there's, there's nothing wrong with my thyroid, but look how, is it just because I'm slouching, like, uh, like that uh, um, uh, Warner Brothers? Oh, oh, who's the, who's the bird with the uh, that dorky bird with the with the neck? Anyway, I can't think of his name, but he has the <laughs> protruding Adam's apple. I feel like that's me when I'm slouching. So if I maybe if I just sit up straighter, it kind of goes away. Is that better? That's better. Or maybe I'm. Maybe because I'm getting older and my um, my hormones are changing, um, my the increase in testosterone is causing my Adam's apple to become more pronounced. Is that possible? Because my voice is getting a little lower. It's very low right now because I had coffee and um, didn't sleep much. Um, all right, that might be it for now. Uh, Oh, no, this is exciting for me, um, and it will be possibly for you. Um, Evan's getting a GoPro. So that way, uh, this is so good. Yeah, so um, over the summer, I go to, um, I'm a huge Rennie, and we go not only to the New York Ren Fair, but we go to the Pennsylvania Ren Fair, which um, I love, and we go all over Pennsylvania. It's beautiful rolling green hills and um, really cool. We'll probably move out there. Um, one of these days, uh, stop paying rent, buy a house, <laughs> get a Pomeranian or a Pomeranian nursery full of Pomeranians. Um, and yeah, so we'll probably capture some of our trips over the summer on GoPro and that'll be much better than me just sitting here in my room with the same background over and over again. And, um... I can uh, take the GoPro, or it's like I'm taking it from him already. <laughs> we can take it out to some of our vampire balls and gothy adventures, and like I, we could have taken it last night. Oh, it was, the costumes were great. Uh, let me let me say a few words about the spring ball we went to because I I think I um, I passed over that too quickly. So um, this event was held at the Grand Prospect Hall which um, is like a wedding venue. They shoot commercials there. Um, people have their bar mitzvahs. It's huge, lavish, built in, I think the late 1800s. Um, really incredible space. And we didn't have the full reign of the place because it would probably cost about a bajillion dollars, but we had the, uh, there's a lower like oak room. It's a, it's a, few, a few rooms conjoined. And um, Dances of Vice, which is a, um, nightlife production vintage party thing that started um, back in I think late 2007 and then we started going in 2008 or it might have been that it started in early 2008 and we started going in late 2000 no I think it was right the first time the the first 
um, real events that the organizer held were at, um, I say the organizer, uh, I think there's probably a better name for her. I don't know what to call people who run these party companies, but <laughs> um, we, uh, they were the first, for the first couple of years anyway, three years maybe, yeah. Um, many of them were held at the Montauk Club. I'm pointing like you know where I'm pointing, but you don't. Um, like at the end of my street, uh, and then up one block, there is an old uh, gentleman's club, um, again from the 1800s, um, that has been preserved quite well. Um, it's a beautiful place. And she used to throw her parties there. And I loved it because it, um, when things were still getting started, this was mainly by word of mouth that people um, came to know what it was. And um, these were all people who were really into dressing up and they go all out. I mean, they spend you know thousands of dollars on their costumes and they do cool things with their makeup. And um, she had some really good musicians performing and dancers and oh, it's great. It's such an intimate environment. You would really talk to people and get to know them. And it was, you know, right down the street. It was so cool, but she couldn't make any money. So she um, started going and having the parties mainly in Manhattan and um, and the company grew and grew and it um, like, uh, um, there are a bunch of like spinoff parties um, and different brands. Um, uh, like there was a burlesque um, segment at one point. I don't think she's still doing that and, um, some that were more focused on um, uh, formal dancing. Um, but anyway, so what, sh what happened last night was more in the style of the um, original design. And uh, it really felt like we were back at the Montauk Club because it had that you know old, dark wooded, um, a few dimly lit rooms that were conjoined. Um, um, and uh, we got to talk to everybody, so. Um, again, the cost, you could not overdo it with the costumes. It was basically like Halloween with a, a lot of people dressed as fairies and, you know, um, woodland creatures. Um, but many weren't because it was basically like an autumn night. It wasn't like a spring night. And, uh, oh, and Voltaire was there. I'm sure you guys know who Voltaire is, the musician. Um, he typically, we see him all the time. He's such a nice guy. And normally he shows up after midnight. You, you can't expect to see him before then. But since this started at 8 and ended at midnight, he was there at like 9, so with his beautiful girlfriend. Um, so nice. Everyone's so nice at these things. Um, and uh, inspiring and creative. And um, yeah, so I guess I'll end on that note. Uh, you see, I talk so fondly about the things that I do that hurt my brain, but I need to, I need to be a responsible adult. No, what I need to do is take days off in the middle of the, that's what I should do. I should, I should just like, I should use the middle of the week somehow, like take my, when I telecommute maybe, then use that night as a writing night, maybe. I don't know, I don't know. I've got to work this out though, because my, my output has, never been this low. <laughs> it hasn't been this low in a long time anyway. Uh, okay, well, that's all. I'm gonna, uh, I've been talking too long. Um, have a wonderful day, and um, I'll see you probably in a week, because that's about my frequency, isn't it? Um, oh, 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 yeah, there's more. So next, <laughs> so next weekend, yes, um, the Red Rum Ball is happening, and I wish we had the GoPro for this, because um, no, I don't. No, I don't. Because they're doing a superhero theme. But the, all the best, all the best DJs, at least my favorite DJs, are, are um, participating in this. And um, I love the Red Room Ball. It's been a while since they held one. Um, it's another goth thing, by the way, if I didn't make that clear. Uh, uh, yeah. So, okay. All right. Bye.